Hello, welcome. Thank you for watching. Today is Palm Sunday, the very first Sunday of the Holy Week. And Holy Week is the week before Jesus' death and resurrection. And it actually includes those things as well. It is the week of Jesus' suffering, his betrayal, his arrest, his death, his staying in the grave and his glorious resurrection on Easter Sunday. This week, I invite you to join me to dive into the scripture every day, to think, to meditate, and to pray on the Word of God. Draw ourselves close to the Lord. And to help you do that, I will post a video like this every day. I've also provided a reading plan that will help you read at home. Every day there are a few verses for you to read that cover the major elements that were happening on that very specific day on the last week of Jesus' normal life on earth. One thing about this reading plan is that it is kind of limited. I've really struggled and I've used several resources, but it's really difficult to decide when to start and when to stop reading because actually it is just one big story that you need to read from the beginning to end in one time and we're going to do that but we will take it and break it up but please keep that in mind it's really difficult to just start and stop somewhere you want to keep reading and some of the parts just belong together today we will be reading from the book of Mark and the story of Jesus entering to Jerusalem is also covered in the book of Matthew and the book of Luke. They tell the story maybe a bit differently. And maybe the order sometimes is a bit different as you will read this week and you will find out. But all the Gospels agree on what happened. And all the Gospels agree that Jesus suffered, that he died that he rose again and that he is alive and that in him there is salvation and that in him there is life and that in him there is power. One thing about the Holy Week is that sometimes people refer to the Holy Week as the Passion Week. Passion because in this week we see the passion Jesus has for sinners like you and I the passion and the compassion that he has with us, the passion that he has by giving his own life so that we can live. And maybe you have seen the movie, The Passion of the Christ, or you have went to this music piece called Matthew's Passion. Those are a video and a music piece that reflect the suffering and death of Jesus Christ in a different way. This week you and I are going to read the scriptures and think about the passion that Jesus has for people like you and I. So today let us open up our Bibles. Let us read from the book of Mark. Mark chapter 11 and you will read verse 1 to 11. And I will be reading here from the NIV. You are of course free to choose any translation that you best prefer. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went, and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing, untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. 
Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This passage is called the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Jesus is entering Jerusalem on a colt. It's a special thing. A colt is a kind of a young donkey. Um, and Jesus decides to enter Jerusalem on a colt. And by doing so, he is fulfilling one Old Testament prophecy. Mark in his Gospel doesn't mention it, but Matthew in his Gospel does mention that this had to happen to fulfill what the prophet Zechariah had written. In Zechariah 9 verse 9 it says, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion! Shout, daughter Jerusalem! See, your king comes to you! Righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus enters Jerusalem on a donkey. And the people in those days must have been aware of this very scripture part in Zechariah. Because as they see Jesus coming in to town on this donkey, they start to welcome him as being the Messiah, as being the promised one. And they take off their cloaks, they take off their jackets, they lay them down on the road as a royal carpet. And they say, Jesus, come in. And they start shouting and they start saying, Hosanna! Hosanna! This word, Hosanna, comes from the Hebrew word Hoshia. And Hoshia is again related to the word Yeshua, the actual name of Jesus in Hebrew, Yeshua. And Yeshua means salvation or save or savior. So they shout Hosanna, they shout save us, save, savior, Yeshua. And if that is not enough, they continue quoting other things from the Old Testament. They say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They quote from Psalm 118, verse 25 and 26. Verse 25, there's again this word, Yeshua or Hoshia. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The people welcome Jesus. He is the Messiah. He is the promised King in the line of King David. He is coming in the name of the Lord. He is coming to bring salvation. And when they talk about Jesus being the one reigning on the throne of King David, being the descendant of King David, there is yet Another verse from the Old Testament that they have in mind. Isaiah 9, verse 7. It talks about the Messiah who is about to come. And it says, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The people welcome Jesus as the Messiah. They say, come in. Come, reign as your father David. Reign forever. Reign over our city. Reign over our lives. 
bring peace, bring justice and righteousness now and forevermore. How do you and I welcome Jesus? How do you and I look at Jesus? Was he just a nice guy? Was he just a prophet? Or was Jesus the Messiah? Was Jesus the Yeshua, the one who came to bring about salvation? To me, Jesus is my Savior. He is my Lord. He is the one who forgives my sins. He is the one who is willing to forgive your sins. The only thing you need to do is to welcome Him into your life as your King, as your Savior, as your Yeshua. If you've done so, there is reason to praise. Palm Sunday is kind of a sad day because it is the beginning of the suffering. In less than a week from Palm Sunday, we know Jesus will suffer, he will be beaten, and he will die hanging on a cross. But we know that this is not the end of the story. That he arose again. And so Palm Sunday also is a happy day. Jesus is bringing about his kingdom. He is bringing about salvation. And if you experience that salvation, then there is way too many reasons to praise him, to thank him, to confess your sins to him, to repent, to focus on him. To love Him, to let Him be the King of your life every single day. Let us pray shortly and then I want to wish you a beautiful day. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the Messiah. We thank you that you are King. We thank you that you are Yeshua, the Savior. Lord, we thank you that you have saved us who believe in you. God, be with us this holy week as we focus on your word. Will you speak to us? Will you transform us? Will you assure us of your peace, your passion, your love? For us. Jesus, we thank you for the incredible gift of your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, your love. We praise you and we worship you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to welcoming you back tomorrow. In the meantime, go ahead download that reading plan, do your daily readings, feel free to share this video, and like it, give some comments down below. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.